Turn to our notes. We are on page one one six one sixteen. The topic we are going to start from review of five. Last week we spoke about that. the benefit of uh, renewing our mind. It's a new creation. As we believe on scriptures, like the whole things pass away, we open everything and become real. We are the new creation. Now, how do we call ourselves this new creation? Is why we can't find a mind is renewed, not our outer state, but a mind is renewed. This is what you know, the emphasize on the analogy that the initial, the first class of identity that we shared about uh, a slum. Kid being adopted when we find. So he will be able to you know, inherit every blessing that he has in the each man's house. Only if he renews his mind. But this child does not renew his mind. He will still behave in the same way, storing our phone for the next meal. You know, living in poverty lifestyle with that kind of mindset. So you need to understand that I have everything. What I need, I have in Christ Jesus. So that understanding, that identity in each of us, we can really get is when we renew our mind. So for us to inherit this blessing in Christ, what we have, we need to inherit, we need to renew our mind. So this is for again and again, we read that. In, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 22, verse 24, it says that you put off concerning your former conduct, that is all of character, that is the nature of the old man. You need to put off the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. 
the old path is meant to be your current. But here we are in the new path. We are in this newness because we have renewed our mind in Christ Jesus. So verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man, which has been created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. We all understand we are not righteous, we are not holy. And we know that Christ was righteous, Christ is holy. When we identify ourselves in Christ, we take on his righteousness and his holiness. So what does it mean? It means that every time when we fail, we need to get ourselves drawn to Christ. Only we can bring him, only we can pick up all like can it's only that we have him with us. We need Christ's strength. Alone by ourselves is not possible. It is not possible with our strength to lead a righteous life, to lead a holy life. The scripture says it is not difficult. It is not difficult. The scripture says when you are moved and grounded with me, when you are moved and grounded with Christ Jesus, it becomes easy. So how do we be rooted and grounded with Christ Jesus? Okay, before I come to that part, it says, even before we could get involved and grounded in Christ Jesus, the Satan brings lots of tactics to our mind, in our thoughts, and our imaginations. So, what does it say? We need to have a guard. We need to have a guard over our mind and our body. Not only our mind, sometimes we are very sweet by the word, by the feeling that we are surrounded by. Okay, that's okay. Carry on. We need to be surrounded on the people to speak cosmic words, to speak the word of God into our mind. One who connects us. In the book of Proverbs, it says, take correction so that it will only sharpen you, it will only help you. Don't you need a friend who kisses you? Oh, a friend always says, hey, that's okay. Come on, yeah, that's okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Whatever you're doing wrong, whatever they are not doing the right thing, if a friend encourages us to do the things that are not pleasing to God, that is not helping you to do, he's not a good friend. Go with a friend who connects you. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about your very being. Receive the correction with the heart of receptive so that it may help us, it may help us to grow in the way God wanted us to grow. Do you think when we read the scripture, it is encouraging us? Yes, it encourages us. At the same time, does the word of God bring correction to us? Why is it very difficult for people to take up the word of God and to live by it? Because it brings correction. Because the scripture is expecting us not to lead a life that is carnal, right? Spiritual. Because carnal, this is what the enemy brings and it makes us, you know, uh, it's easy. this is how people are in the, in the natural. This is how people are, this is how we lead a life. Why do you not want to lead a life that is really different? So the carnal minded or the flesh minded means. A mind that is governed by the flesh, as the Romans 8 says. The desires of the flesh. We try to meet every desires of the flesh. These are the enemy attacks. Through the desires, the lust of the eyes, pride of life, lust of the flesh. So it gives it the, the desire of. When we heed to the desire, it will lead us to sin. But the minute when it comes as a desire, when you take hold of it and say, and speak scripture to it, you see that you don't need heed to the calm of desire, but then you are spiritually minded to speak the word of God. 
So this is what it says. A carnally minded person seeks to fulfill the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of so what God has been called. This is how the unbeliever does things in his room. But as a believer, what is that we need to see? As a believer, how do we renew our mind? The scripture can be turned to Romans 8, 8. Romans 8, 8 says, those who are the realm of the flesh cannot be spared. Those who are the realm of the flesh cannot be Can I request you to turn to open 623? Can I request you to please repeat? I think there's some problem with the camera. Give me a second, please. I'm just trying to fix the camera. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sammy, I might be on the Okay, so I'm going Is the camera clear? Is my voice audible? I mean, the voice volume is very low, man. Sorry. Your, your volume is very low. Should I do something with my laptop? Laptop volumes. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, I'm just trying to do something. Am I out of it? Am I out of Still not able to hear you, man. Sam, am I clear? Am I audible? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sam. Sometimes, you know, if you go, if there's a problem in the audio or the video, request you to please unmute and say sometimes we may not look at the chat uh, because I keep it minimized. Um, so I just request you to please unmute and speak out so that we know. Okay. Okay, class, we're talking about the carnally minded, okay? Uh, what is the difference between carnally minded and being spiritually minded? So I'm just giving a recap. We read on Romans 8, 6, where it talks about to be carnally or fleshly minded means to have a mind governed by 
flesh. And we also looked into 1 John 2.16, which says, living to please one's flesh desire. A carnally minded person seeks to fulfill the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So as we talk about these three things, are you remembered with something? Where did the enemy attack the human with these three things? That is the lust of flesh, lust of eyes, and the pride of life. Anyone online, on campus, where did the enemy attack the human with these three areas? Yes, Anand? Yeah. The very first time that the enemy attacked with these three things was to Eve. He showed an apple, the lust of the eyes. He created a desire out of that apple. If you eat this, nothing will happen. You will become more like God, lust of flesh, pride of life. You'll become more like God. You will not die was the lust of flesh, and you will become more like God was the pride of life. And the same tactic he uses every time he tempts human. Same thing. You'll become more than something. So here we see the unbeliever does not realize certain things that the enemy, that is the way he plans it. But as a believer, we are aware because the Lord has warned us before. In Romans 6, 23, can I request you all to please turn to Romans 6, 23 and the other person, Romans 8, 8. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin is death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life. So here, the scripture, God is asking us to be focused on the wages of sin. The every fleshy desire that we give heed to will lead us to corrupt in nature, and eventually it will lead us to sin. But then the gift of God is eternal life. Gift of God is eternal life. And that life as full of joy. The enemy's lies are saying that if you walk with the discipline of God, or if you lead a life that pleases God, there is no joy, there is no fun. This is what the enemy speaks to each of our mind. And it entices us with these lies and leads us away from Christ. And here it says, Romans 8.8. 8. Can I request you all to read Romans 8.8? 8? So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we need to understand what the scripture says. Those who are in the flesh... Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. Because the desire of the flesh is to draw you away from God. There's nothing that would please God. So there's a very big difference from what we see between, you know, to who live life in flesh and who live life according to the Spirit. So we read in Romans 8.5. Can I request you all to please read Romans chapter 8, verse 5? For those who live according to the flesh shed their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit... And 6 also. Yes. Things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Thank you. So as a believer, as a believer, we need to intentionally lead a life that pleases God. That pleases God because life governed by the Spirit is where you see this eternal life and there's peace in that life. 
So we need to intentionally set ourselves what pleases God. So this is what it says that we need to get ourselves aligned where we can identify ourselves in Christ Jesus so that we can respond to every situation that the enemy comes, you know, brings it against us in the word of God. So here you see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Can I request you all to read, please? You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like more humans? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 says, For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, where there is strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like Mermen. That means like the other men of the world. Because when Christ has called us, he's expecting certain value to be carried through us. For us to identify ourselves in Christ, we need to change our mind by renewing our mind. and change That may affect our behavior, the way we lead our life. Because our life should be pleasing God. So if our life still has certain things of the carnal person, like what is there, envy, strife, division, then the scripture says you're still leading a life that is carnal. And here you see carnally minded believers, there are about five points that is listed in our notes, have death instead of life and peace, cannot please God, actually find themselves doing things contrary to God's ways. You see, it is against God's ways. End up in bondage to sin and addiction. If you continue to lead your life in this way, you will land up again getting into the same bondage and sin and addiction. Find it difficult to understand the things of the Spirit. Even if somebody speaks to you about the ways of God, because our mind is so much in, in, in clinged to the carnal ways, it becomes very difficult for our mind to understand God's ways and behave like the mermen, that is, like the others of the world. But what is the word of God encouraging us to do? He's asking us set a focus on Christ, keep ourselves away from the lies of the enemy, and set ourselves so that this renewed person, the newness that, Christ, that we find in Christ Jesus may take place, may get rooted. Because when we tend to swing on one extreme, okay, now I'm very spiritual, I need to put away all these things, I, I need to, you know, uh, being spiritually minded is to, you know, uh, live above the earthly life. No. Being spiritually minded is, Handling the earthly things in the heavenly ways, as per God, God, God's principle, as per the teaching of the Word of God. So here we see that we need to we need to embrace the spiritual principles that the Word of God speaks to us, so that we can lead our life on this earth that which may please God. So here it says wisdom is the ability to take the principles of the heavenly realm and apply it correctly to daily life situation in a practical way. So we need to ask God, God, increase me in your wisdom that I may apply your spiritual principle in my daily life that I may lead a life that pleases you. So we see that in Matthew 10, 16, scripture says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, Jesus is aware. God is aware of the things of this earth. So, that's why he's saying, I'm sending you in the midst of this. 
But I'm warning you, be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. And in Luke 16, 8, he says, For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation that the sons of, than the sons of light. So what is Jesus saying here in Luke 16, 8? Okay, actually, he's actually in turn, he's telling us the sons of light should be able to walk in a greater wisdom. Though the sons of the world are more shrewd in their generation, but here Jesus is encouraging us, you have the greater in you, who is that Jesus, greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. So God, Jesus is encouraging each one of us to grow in his wisdom that we may tackle the people of this world so that the Son of Light should be able to walk in a greater wisdom than the sons of the world. So I request you to please read the book, APC Publication, on being spiritually minded and earthly wise. I'll just post that link for you all on the chat. Give me a minute. Okay, request all to please download this book, read through, and you know, you can submit an assignment of your understanding from this book directly on Google Classwork for online students. And for on campus students, you can write and submit it either in a paper or you can do it on a Word doc and email it to me. Okay, so how do we walk in spirit? Galatians 5:16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, 18, and 25. It reads saying that I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So, as believers, we are to walk in the spirit, we are to be led by the spirit, and to live in the spirit. Three things we are to walk in the spirit. We are to be led by the Spirit and we need to live by the Spirit. So as we walk in the Spirit, we need to live out the Spirit instead of according to the, you know, the, the, the desire of the flesh. We need to walk in the Spirit so that we can manifest the life of Christ which is expressed through the fruit of the Spirit. And in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we see that as we do so, we are transformed into Christ's likeness so that Jesus is formed in us and is seen in us. How? As we lead our life. When we lead our life, we lead our life that pleases God. The people should witness Christ's likeness in us. So how do we walk in Him? We need to walk like how Jesus demonstrated on this earth. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, it says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. How do we walk in Him? We can only walk in Him, as stated in verse 7 says, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it, thanksgiving. We can only walk with Christ when we are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. So how do we get rooted and grounded? By meditating on the word, by spending more time in prayer, so that God reveals, Jesus reveals himself to us, so that we can abide in him and he in us. So this is what Jesus said. You know, when he was uh, living on this earth in John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, he says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things, that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, 
that you may marvel. So when Jesus lived on this earth, he did not do anything on his own. He did everything what is what he saw his father do. Jesus just demonstrated the love of God to us. He could only do because he was connected with Father. So now Jesus is encouraging each of us as we lead our life on this earth, we can be connected with him. So when we are connected with him, we will be the imitators of Christ on this earth, just like how Paul demonstrated. Paul was so much connected when I'm I'm talking about Apostle Paul. Paul was so much connected with God, with Jesus, that he demonstrated Jesus in his life. In fact, some of the church members, when he went out preaching on his missionary journey, they said, though we have not seen Jesus directly, but we have seen Jesus through Apostle Paul. So that's how he was rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He also went, as an apostle, he also went to an extent of saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That means, just imagine if a leader, if a person like Apostle Paul could make such a statement. That means he has led his life that pleases God. And for him to make this very bold statement, I am imitating Christ in all my ways. And here even Jesus says, I'm imitating my father. I don't do anything of my own, what I've not seen my father do. So what is Jesus trying to teach us here? He's saying, living on this earth is not difficult to do the things that pleases God. I have walked a life, so I'm sure you can also do it. You can do it much more easier. Why? Because I am living in you. I'm abiding in you. That's what in John 15, 15, Jesus demonstrates the relationship between the wine and the branch. He says when the wine and the branch are together, abiding together, there's a union with them. They can bear much fruit. And he also says that in the same chapter, you cannot do anything without me. Without me, you cannot do anything. So for us to be fruitful, for us to walk on this earth with heavenly, with, uh, with spiritual discipline, or with spiritual principles, is only through Christ Jesus. So we need to get ourselves rooted and grounded in him. Just like how Jesus walked with Father, we also should walk with Christ Jesus in our daily life. So that in 1 Peter 3.16 says, having a good conscience. Can I request you all to read, please? Anand, you can read. Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. So in 1 Peter 3, 16, he says, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, even if somebody accuse you, saying that you did wrong, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed that we need to walk in the way that pleases God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 says, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things that we are for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. So everything we are is because of Christ. So we live in union with God, through God, out from him. So how do we handle our social and family relationship in the Lord? Very clearly says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 22 to 39. It's most to do with the scriptures in this class because the scriptures has the power to change us. The scripture has the power. It's not our words. The words may inspire you, but it may not empower you. 
empowerment lasts long. The scripture empowers each one of us. Scripture has the power to break us, to build us, and to build us strong in the Lord. So here the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 22 and 39, it says, For he who is called in the Lord, while a slave is the Lord's free man, likewise, he who is called while free in Christ's slave, his Christ's slave. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. And yeah, it says in Ephesians 6, 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for, they, for this is right. So being obedient to our parents is very important. Colossians 3, 18. Wives, submit to your husband as is fitting in the Lord. So here we talk about Christ teaching us about obedience, about submitting. Submitting, yes, to our family, in relation to our family, but in the social life, we see it, uh, Lord asking us to be submissive to our leaders, to authorities, live and abide by the rule that is set. So we, as followers of Christ, we, as you know, a, a servant of God, we need to be an example. So how do we be an example? Wherever we are, maybe at our workplace, in our college, in our ministry where we serve, the church, we should be the example of Christ Jesus in our conduct, in our life, in the way we talk, in our action. In every area, we need to be right front of God. How can we be right? Only when we are rooted in Christ Jesus. We see that in Colossians 2, 7, as we read before, we need to be rooted and built up in Him so that we are established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So very important here, uh, there's a figurative been used when a plant is rooted in the ground, where the root goes inside the earth, where that provides the strength for that plant to stand, stand even in midst of storm. So we, when we are rooted in God, when we are rooted in Christ Jesus, we receive the strength from him. He will be our strength so that the storm, any kind of temptation that may come our way, any kind of uh, uh, any any difficult circumstance that when we face, we can handle it with strength. Why? Because we draw the strength from Christ himself because we are we are grounded in him. We receive our strength, and we, what does the plant, what does the root do to the plant? It gives the strength, and it also nourishes the plant. So where do we get our nourishment? From the Word of God. So when we are rooted and grounded in Christ through His Word and His Spirit, we have been strengthened, and we have been nourished. We get two things. We are strengthened, and we are nourished. If we lack in anything, you see a plant when it's growing weak. You know this plant is not nourished properly, isn't it? So we tend to put water, we tend to put some fertilizer. Why? So that this plant can be nourished. It can grow stronger. The same thing applies to us. When we are rooted and grounded in Christ, it should be a continuous process where we read the word of God, we meditate and we pray on a continuous process so that this body, each of us, the spirit person has been rooted and grounded in Christ so that we receive this continuous strength and the nourishment from Christ Jesus that we may grow strong. So what happens? The root of a bean should be firmly planted in him. So how do we firmly plant? It is through three steps. One is being setting a focus on Christ Jesus. When we set a focus on Jesus, we will not fall. Just like how Peter desired, uh, you know, when he saw Jesus walk on the water, Peter desired, Lord, can I also walk? And what did Jesus say? Come. 
immediately peter you know he just stepped out of the boat and he started to walk on the water and what happened there was a big boisterous wind behind him we see that when we read um, matthew chapter 14 i think verse 28 maybe from 28 to end when you read it says when peter saw a big wind coming behind jesus he he, he just set his focus on that wind he looked at that wind scripture says he looked at the wind the minute he changed his focus from jesus to the wind he started to drown immediately the scripture says he was afraid the fear came into him so fear is the foundation i'm sure you would have read studied this in the faith class fear is the foundation the minute fear came he started drowning and he said lord help me and immediately jesus held his hand and lifted him up so what is it for each of us in a walk with the Lord? We need to set our focus on Christ Jesus. So when we set our focus on Christ Jesus, no matter how big a storm can come, it will not overwhelm us, but we will walk straight. We will walk over the storm. Second is build your relationship with Jesus. How? Through your personal time in prayer and in the word. When we build a relationship with Jesus, he will strengthen us. He will nourish us. Depend on Jesus and act on what his ability means in our life. No matter how, how many years you grow in the Lord, at every moment, God is asking us to be dependent on Jesus. God is asking us to be dependent on him. That's why, you know, um, and Jesus says in the scripture, he says, it's very easy for a child to get into the kingdom of God than for a man. Why? A grown-up man has many reasons to reason out in his intellect. But the child, it is very easy, very innocent. He just believes every word. So God is asking us, like a child, be dependent on the Father, no matter how big you grow, how long you grow. Be dependent. Lord, is this right? Can I do this? Inquire with the Lord. This is what God said for David. God called David as a man after his own heart because God was pleased with David because everything David inquired with the Lord. He checked with God, everything. He didn't go behind any man or in his own understanding, but he checked with Lord. This is something that God is asking us as we build a relationship with God. Three things God is asking us to do. Set your focus on Jesus, build your relationship with him, and then depend on Jesus so that we may not fall. We need to be built up in Christ Jesus. As we are rooted, we need to get ourselves built up in Christ Jesus. This is what uh, Apostle Paul is, uh, you know, um, uh, uses this metaphor to build us in Christ Jesus. And he also brings us in different stages of our spiritual growth in Christ Jesus. He, he states these three stages. One is the spiritual growth. One is the spiritual growth. As said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 15, I'll read it because of time. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So what as Apostle Paul is saying, when he is uh, going on his missionary journey, planting churches, uh, you know, and sharing the gospel, he's saying, though there are many fathers, but you have one father that is in Jesus Christ. And I have given that gospel and I am your father. So he's saying the spiritual birth. He's telling, I, when I shared the gospel, you received it and you are being birthed in Christ Jesus. So as a new baby, okay, you, you, there's a birth, there's a spiritual birth. Now, second, he's saying babies in Christ Jesus. Yesterday, when we were meditating during our supernatural time, uh, we read about First Peter chapter 2. Peter also says, you know, we need to crave for Christ 
for that milk just like babies how babies born it craves so that milk what does it do does it wait for the mother to come and feed him no he cries he kicks he does everything till the milk has been given to the child the similar manner when we when we were birthed in christ we craved for more of christ through his word and his spirit we craved and here as a baby is in christ we crave for this spiritual food and then the third point apostle paul makes in colossians chapter 128 says being matured in christ jesus how are we being matured here he says colossians 128 him we preach warning every man teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus so apostle paul is saying initially first he said you have been birthed in christ so just like a father i am your first father as i shared the gospel of christ you all have been spiritually been born now second he said babies in christ he says in 1 corinthians 3 1 uh, i brethren could not speak to you as to the spiritual people or as to the but as to carnal as to babies in christ because you're a baby you're a newborn in christ i need to speak to you in that term where i cannot give you the meat the strong teaching i need to give you the milk that is needed for the baby because as a baby each one we're craving now the third point he says now you're matured Okay, after many years, he's meeting or he's writing letters to the people, to the churches that he, he formed, he built it up. Now they are matured believers. Now when he's writing, now he's not writing to them like, you know, I'm your spiritual father, y'all are just born. No, nor he's not writing like, you know, I'm feeding y'all uh, milk because y'all are new spiritual babies. No, now he's addressing to the spiritual people, more matured. So now his writing is through his warning. Through his warning. See, 1 Colossians, sorry, Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, he says, Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom. So there's a strong teaching. He's warning, he's correcting, and he's releasing God's wisdom into each one so that every man will be made perfect in christ jesus so the teaching is coming very strong because he is not talking to somebody who is carnal he's talking to the spiritual leaders very strong teaching so as he's teaching to them he is encouraging as you're our leaders yes i'm giving you all certain warning my words are coming as a strong instruction but at the same time i'm telling you you can walk in this manner and you can reflect christ is the only way john 15 15 how when you abide in him and when christ abides in you you can walk with him why because we have been strengthened we have been nourished and the scripture says, when you walk with me and I in you, you can be more fruitful. So for us to identify ourselves in Christ Jesus, we need to walk in obedience. We need to be more like Christ. So how do we see ourselves abiding in Christ Jesus? We have exceeded our time. If you can give me five minutes, please, I'll complete it. Is that OK, class? From online, are you all OK with five minutes, please? Okay, thank you. So I'm not reading John 15. I request you all to read John 15. Okay, Re please read John 15, verse 1 to 8. I'll just summarize this. Uh, we are on page 124 in our notes. There are a few certain points that has been shared here. The characteristics, certain characteristics and behavior that will be manifested in us when we have a relationship with Christ, when we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. So in our notes, we have certain things. So we just not those characteristics will be reflected in us. It can be much more when we become imitators of Christ Jesus. So the very first point talks about we will take on the mind of Christ. The very first thing is we will take on the mind of Christ. The renewed mind 
will reflect the mind of Christ. Second, it says in everything we give thanks. Suddenly there's a heart of gratitude. You know, renewed mind makes us to get into an action. It changes our heart's attitude. It makes us be thankful in every circumstances. See, this is the reflection. This is the Christ likeness. What happened to Paul and Silas when they were in the prison? What did they do? They rejoiced. They sang praise. So there's a change in the attitude. Did they grumble? Did they complain? Did they justify themselves? Did they defend themselves? They can, but they didn't do anything of that sort. But what did they do? There was a change in their attitude. From where did this attitude come from? Christ-likeness. Christ-likeness. So this should be in us. In everything we should give thanks. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, In everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. This is the will of God. So we need to give thanks. We need to carry this heart of gratitude. The third point here is, we are thought of the Spirit. We all know from John 14, 16 says, the Comforter, Jesus sent the Comforter to abide in us forever. So when the Comforter is abiding in us, He who abides in us, teaches us, speaks to us, guides us. So He is continuing to do Continuing to teach us what to do when. Okay. And the fourth we see is we walk in obedience. This is the Christ nature. We walk in obedience to our authorities, to our uh, to our pastors, to our leaders, wherever we are. We walk and we submit because this is what Christ did. He walked and he submitted to God the Father. Now, 1 John 3 24 says, Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given to us. So if the Holy Spirit is living in us, he will lead us in the way that we will be in obedient and we will be submissive, whichever place we are. Fifth point is. We walk in holiness. 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor him. Remain in him. Stay connected in him. Don't step out of the union you have with him. So we need to abide in Jesus Christ. So this is something, the four points that will be reflected in us when we abide in Jesus. First is we will take on the mind of Christ in everything. We will give thanks. Third, we have been taught by the Spirit. Fourth, we walk in obedience. And fifth is we walk in holiness. Because we live in Christ Jesus and we are in Him. When we are in Him, we need to be like Him. We need to be the imitators of Christ Jesus. So when people look at us, they need to, they need to identify Christ Jesus in us. We need to be His radiance. We need to shine the light of Christ in and through us. So today Christ is asking, today God is asking, as you abide in me and I in you, can we abide? Can we get into this partnership so that we can be identified in Christ Jesus? So that we can be that light that God is asking us to be. We can be that imitator of Christ that God is expecting in and through us. We are not an ordinary being. We are servant of Christ Jesus. When we are his servant, as a good servant imitates his master. A good servant imitates his master. So we need to ask ourselves, Lord, in my walk, in my walk, am I imitating you? Is my life reflecting you? It should. 
because when we identify ourselves in Christ, that means we are inserting ourselves inside Christ and Christ is around us. When Father looks at each one of us, He looks at Christ over us. So if Father can see that, even in our walk on this earth should reflect Christ in our life. We should be that aroma of Christ on this earth when we leave. Can we ask God, God help me to identify myself. As I identify myself in you, I need to reflect you. I need to reflect you in all my life, in my way, in my being, in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions. I need to be that aroma of Christ in you. So can I request one of y'all, maybe from the online, the online class is very quiet. Can I ask someone from the online class to raise your voice and pray and ask God, God help us to identify ourselves in you. We want to be more like you. We want our self nature to decrease and Christ to increase in us. Can I request one of you all from the online class and one person, uh, can I request Nina to pray from our offline class as well? Guys, you all can pass the mic then. And this will be our last session. Yes. Anyone from online, can you all unmute and pray? Sean, would you like to pray? Samuel, Arila, anyone, you all can just unmute and pray. Shall I pray? Yes, Chachin. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word that you have spoken to us, Lord. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, what is our identity in you, Father. Father God, you are our creator, God. You love us as we are. You accept us as we are. Father, you knew us even before the foundations of this earth was laid, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Father, you have known us. You have chosen us, Lord. And you have set us apart for your glory, Lord. Lord, help each of us to live in this truth, Lord, so that we reflect more of you, Lord. Father, in our flesh, Lord, we are nothing, Lord. Father, help us to realize this, Lord. But by your grace, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Lord. Father, it is only in you, Father, that we have everything, Lord. Our life in the fullest, Lord. Help us to recognize this every moment of our lives so that we will have more of you be led by your spirit, Lord. You have given us everything, Lord, in this world to live for you, Lord. Your word, Lord is more than enough, Lord. Help us to speak your word, write your word in our heart, Lord, so that we will not sin against you, Lord, but walk in your ways. Even though the temptations and trials might come, Father, help us to stand firm in your word, knowing our identity, Father God. Father, even so that when the doubter and the devil comes against us, Lord, Father, that we will know for sure that we stand in you, Father God, in your word. And your word is the truth, Father God. And help us to know that truth each time. Lord, bring to our remembrance Lord, whatever word that we have to speak at that time, Father God. Father, thank you for choosing us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live in your truth, walk in humility, obey in your commandments, whatever that you have taught us, Lord, in each of the classes, Lord, especially, Lord, knowing our identity. Help us to walk in freedom, Lord, in liberty, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us freedom and help us, Lord, to truly and humbly obey you, Father, even unto the end, Lord. You have chosen us, Lord, and you will keep us to the end. Thank you, Lord. We pray for each and every one of us. And thank you, Lord, that you have, Lord, you blessed pastor to teach us that word, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you bless her, Lord, and make her a blessing to many. In Jesus' mighty matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Nina, would you like to pray? We thank you for everything you have done for us, Lord. Father God, now what we learned that we had to be in Christ, 
help us to live our life out of this truth lord that you have saved us you are renew you lord help us to walk in that renewed mind lord help us to be in him to be like jesus lord this is your call for our lives each one of our lives lord that to be to be live a life like how jesus lived help us lord to live a life that is honoring you worshiping you be thankful to you help lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you so much for joining in the session the course on identity in christ so as we have completed i will also be posting the assignment on google classroom and to our students on campus request you all to please um have a watch online students to have a watch on google classroom for the assignment and yes we have come to an end of the session i pray that uh, we all will grow in this identity of christ to see ourselves in christ jesus so that we can be the imitators of christ thank you so much god bless amen hope it was a blessing <laughs>